Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see about the placental anomalies that is about the various disorders that arise from the placenta, its anatomical variations and all. Okay? First we will see the anatomic variants. Normally we know placenta is a disc shaped structure with the umbilical cord inserted at the center. Right? And it has two plates namely basal plate and chorionic plate. Basal plate is the decidual plate. Okay? Now, some of the variants include bilobed placenta. Here, we will have two lobes of placenta of equal size and the cord is going to insert somewhere in the center. The second variant is a multi-lobed placenta where there can be multiple lobes that can be seen in the entire placenta. And number three is a susensurate lobe of placenta. What is the susensurate lobe? There is nothing but a accessory lobe in addition to the original placenta tissue. For example, if this is the placenta, there is an additional lobe that is present within the membrane itself and this is not attached to the placenta. So, there is some gap between the two lobes, but this lobe is invariantly smaller than the normal lobe of placenta. Next one is a battle door placenta. Battle door placenta has a different kind of umbilical cord insertion. Normally we know the umbilical cord inserts at the center of the placenta, right? But what is happening in the battle door placenta is this cord is inserted at the margins, okay? So, for example, this is the normal insertion of placenta, whereas in battle to placenta, it is inserted like this. Next one is the velamentous insertion of the cord. Normally, we know the fetal vessels are going to be inside the umbilical cord, right? But what happens in velamentous insertion is the fetal vessels remain exposed outside like this. Okay, so when this exposure is happening, when the fetal head is descending down, okay, when the fetal head is descending down, the fetus itself can compress these vessels and it can result in stillbirth or fetal heart rate decelerations and excessive bleeding. And remember, mostly the bleeding in case of abruption or placenta previa or from the mother. But in this case, this bleeding is of fetal origin and this condition is known as vasa previa. The next type of placenta is placenta membranacea. In this, the villi or distributed throughout the membranes covering the placenta. In this case also, there can be bleeding that can occur antenatally as well as postnatally. One variant of placenta membranacea is ring shaped placenta where the placenta is annular or ring shaped. Ring shaped. And another modification is extra chorionic placentation. What happens in extra chorionic placentation is 
normally we know there are two plates forming the placenta the basal plate and the chorionic plate in this extra chorionic placentation the chorionic plate is very much smaller than the basal plate okay so this can be of two types again number one is circum marginate placenta where there is a fibrin deposition at the edges but that that is a smooth transition another type of extra chorionic placentation is circumvellate placenta and here there are folds of membranes arising like this so both the amnion and chorion and inside this there can be fibrin deposition or blood collection and all okay usually this transition is not smooth that can be placental mesenchymal dysplasia also where there is inhomogeneously thickened placenta the villi or swollen and edematous and there are cystic vessels seen what is placenta megaly that is when the thickness is more than 4 cm but this is a homogeneously thickened placenta okay so we'll see the pictures for better understanding so this is a bilobed placenta where we have one and two lobes okay and the cord is coming and inserting in the center usually or it can attach to either of the placenta also then there is a sussurate placenta okay where there is a small accessory lobe attached to the original lobe of the placenta and next one is placenta membranacea see the villi are completely distributed over the membranes here and this is a ring shaped placenta or zonary placenta which is a modification of placenta membranacea there can be uh, there can be deficient of the placental tissues at sites and next one is a fenestrated placenta in this placenta what happens is basically a central lobe of the placenta will be missing see this is very light in color okay so this region this light in color means some of the lobes here are missing okay so that is a fenestrated placenta and in fenestrated placenta and sussurate lobe placenta what happens is there can be retained placental tissue that can lead to secondary postpartum hemorrhage or there can be atonic uterus okay and it can also leads to endometritis okay so this is battledore placenta see this is the placenta and there is a marginal cord insertion so basically this is a battledore placenta and this placenta again this is a accessory lobe okay so this is a sussurate placenta okay so this is a extra chorionic placentation so normally the chorionic plate and the basal plate are of the same size what happens in extra chorionic placentation is that chorionic plate is going to be smaller than the basal plate see so this is the chorionic plate size this is the basal plate size they are going to be smaller and in circum marginate placentation this transition is smooth okay only fibrin deposition is there and there is a flattened peripheral edge okay whereas in circum pallet placenta there are folded membranes with fibrin and hemorrhage okay so the membranes are folded here okay and this is velamentous cord insertion see the normal umbilical cord insertion is all the vessels are contained inside the umbilical cord itself what is happening in the velamentous cord insertion see there are exposed fetal vessels okay that are seen outside the umbilical cord okay hope you are you have understood about the variants of placenta now next one we are going to see 
about next one we are going to see about the placental deposits normally calcium can deposit in the placenta at the basal plate side okay and this can happen with increasing gestation smoking etc okay we'll see placental deposits mostly the deposit is calcium and it is deposited in conditions like increasing maternal age or increasing gestational age smoking and when there are conditions with maternal calcium levels increased okay so what is going to happen is there will be four stages of maturity of the placenta in the first stage okay there is echogenic areas that are randomly dispersed in the placental substance and only subtle indentations of the chorionic plate are seen okay in the second stage the basal echogenic densities are present but this small indentations are now going to get deeper and these are basically seen as comma like indentations or basophilic stippling sorry and in the second stage what is going to happen is the basal echogenic densities are present and these indentations are going to increase deeper and they are basically seen like comma like densities and in stage 3 the echogenicity is spared or there are fallout areas okay so that is fallout areas present and indentations of the chorionic plate are going to get even more deeper and irregular densities with acoustic shadowing are present okay so these are the three stages of maturity of the placenta and if stage 3 is seen before 32 weeks of gestation then it can result in adverse perinatal outcome and it, there can be fgr or there can be perinatal or stillbirth perinatal death or stillbirth placental perfusion disorders can occur at two sites as we all know either it can occur at the villi or it can occur at the intravillar space so in the villi means the fetal circulation is going to get compromised and in intravillar space means it can affect the maternal circulation so in which conditions the maternal circulation can be compromised if there is any fibrin deposition that is happening okay see if there is a perivillus fibrin deposition now this can be seen grossly as yellow round film blocks and there can be infarction that is happening in the placenta also then the placenta will be seen as a yellowish white infarcted area and this infarction can result when there is maternal allo immunity also there can occur hematomas in the placenta basically there can be a retroplacental hematoma that can be seen in abruption and there can be marginal hematoma that is seen at the margins of the placenta that is where the chorionic and the basal plate fuse there can be subchorionic hematoma also that can occur beneath the layer of chorion and usually when it is small it resolves by itself but when it is big it is known as bruis moles fetal circulation 
can be affected by thrombosis in the villi and if there is any conditions that will be leading to fetal hypoxia there will be numerous blood vessels that will be increasing in the villi of the placenta so these two conditions are choreo angiosis and choreo angiomatosis where increased blood vessels are seen in terminal villi and in choreo angiomatosis increased blood vessels are seen in stem villi coming to placental tumors placental choreoangioma is one of the tumor of placenta that can occur with the incidence of about 1% and here we have the stem villi and the blood vessels surrounding or seen proliferating c and usually if you see this is a picture of choreoangioma it is usually seen in the chorionic plate and it extends into the amniotic cavity if you see in usg this is seen as a hypoechoic structure with increased vascularity more than 4 cm of the mass can result in adverse outcomes differential diagnosis include hematoma fibroid etc not only this there can be metastatic tumors that can come to the placenta also and they can be leukemia lymphoma etc with this we are completing the disorders of placenta sorry repeat with this we are completing the discussion on placenta until we meet in the next video take care happy learning and bye bye